it's Lisa here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can enhance your Procreate drawings through using texture and whimsical details. We'll be creating a cute little fox in a woodland background, and I'm going to be using brushes from my Instant Artist collection. I've gone ahead and created a document that is 3,600 pixels by 4,800 pixels. You can decide to choose a smaller size if you have a small iPad um, because we are going to be using quite a few layers, so just bear that in mind. Okay, so I've chosen kind of like a bluey background, like a sort of um, desaturated background, and I've gone ahead and sketched out my fox already just to save some time. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. And I'm going to bring that below my sketch and my sketch is turned to multiply and I've also just brought the opacity down just a dash I don't want it to overpower it too much the first brush I'm going to be working with is the grungy pencil and I've already chosen my palette so I'm going to use this orange for the fox and we're just going to very lightly in a playful manner, just add some strokes. I think what I might do at this point is actually work on the background first because this orange is quite harsh against this dark blue. So I'm just going to finish his face quickly. I'm just very roughly filling in this area, still with a grungy pencil. And coming round for his little ears. I'm not too worried about precision or gaps or anything like that at this stage. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and actually work on the background just so that we don't have that uh, harsh contrast in our, on our screen. So I'm going to create a new layer. Make sure that it's underneath the fox. And coming over to um, kind of like a white creamy color, I'm going to use one of my stamps called Carlo. And I'm just going to create the base by just repeating my stamps. Oops, I don't want it so high. And I'm just changing the size here and there. We're not going for um, precision or filling in the entire area because the whole point is that we want to retain some of that texture. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer above that and choose a lighter blue again using the same stamp but I'm just going to make it slightly larger and you'll see it you're really starting to create quite nice uh, texture variation just by using the stamp and because we've got a darker background and the colors on top of it are lighter it gives it kind of quite a nice feel and then you can actually see the texture quite a bit more. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so the, the yellow, or should I say the orange doesn't look so harsh anymore. Now we can go ahead <laughs> and carry on. Okay, so I'm going to choose the grungy pencil again. And start working on the body. just increasing the pressure when I want the brush to be larger I'm sure you can hear I'm pretty quick with my strokes to give it that sort of loose feel and we just want to add just a dash of kind of like his fur flying out a dash Don't have to be too precision, um, too careful around his tail because we're going to be adding the white above that. So, and 
and it comes around his body We're adding some fur and I quite like the sort of grungy edges gives it a very sort of dry medium uh, look which is what I'm going for and we just lightly want to I'm just using you know my, my pressure quite lightly when I do the wispy bits because we want to see that sort of textured detail of line work okay I think his orange is pretty much done so I'm going to work on the white bits of the fox so coming over to my creamy color in fact I actually might make it a lot whiter um, okay so I'm still using the same brush which is the grungy pencil just want to see if this white is too white yeah it looks too cold so I'm gonna actually stick to that oops to that cream color I think that looks better and you'll see I'm just very fast sort of hand movements to, as I said to create a loose line and varying the pressure of my pencil and now we're just going to work on his little face the other half You'll see this brush is quite versatile because it gives you as I said um, kind of lovely detail when you're very light with your hand and then you can fill in very large areas if you apply pressure and I'm just at this stage adding sort of wispy kind of hair furry hair detail Okay, I don't think I took that orange too high enough, so I'm going back to my orange layer and I'm just coming in. It looks better. Back to my white layer and now I'm going to work on his chest area. His or her, we don't know yet. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn off the white background at this point because I can't sort of see the edges that's better and we just literally very lightly with our pencil using gentle sort of motion varying our uh, pressure of the pencil to, to create different sort of variation of line work and the same for his tail the lovely thing about um, this style of illustration is you know it gives you kind of like quite a bit of leeway to make errors you know or at least not be perfect should I say and the beauty about this is that you know we want to see all that that beautiful sort of um, you know handwork and we want to see those those line strokes that you create so don't you know don't worry too much about uh, being precise Okay, I think he's starting to take shape. 
Okay, so I'm going to start adding some detail above the fox. Um, well, at least above these uh, kind of color layers. I just want to give him definition here and there. So I've, as, as you've seen, I've created a new layer and I'm going to use kind of like a brownie color. Again, I'm still sticking to uh, the same brush. And I'm doing that because at this point I want, I want uniformity in the look. And this brush gives me the same kind of feel. And I'm just very lightly going to add some detail. We're just going here and there. Not too much. Okay, so I'm just very lightly giving myself an indication of where his limbs would go. Probably something like that. And his tail. Would probably do something like that. Okay, I'm going to turn off my reference layer and see where we stand and turn on my background. Yeah, I think he's starting to take some shape. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to um, leave that darker layer for now and start adding texture so that we can see what we're left with and if I need to add any more um, interest and detail onto that layer. Okay, so on a new layer above the orange, I'm going to use one of my stamp brushes called Crosshatch and sticking to my brown color, I'm just going to start stamping out areas where I want more intensity. And don't worry about this stage, I know the whole, um, you know, the brushes outside of the fox's area. We're going to clip it, so don't worry too much about that. And we're just going to start adding some detail here and there. I think what I want to do is have a larger area of the cross hatch. So I'm just going to increase the brush. Yeah, that looks better. And you can vary the size as you want. So I'm concentrating more on the one side of the fox because I'm, I'm going to be using this as the kind of like the shadowy side of the fox. So I'm just deleting the area there on the tail and I'm going to add some more just to give it a more of an intense texture. Okay, so we're going to clip that. We're just going to select that layer, choose clipping mask and basically it's going to clip to the orange area of the fox and then I'm going to change that to color burn and you'll see immediately it's already intensified the the color which is quite nice okay so I'm going to start adding actually what I'm going to try and do first I'm going to turn that to multiply for now because what I want to do now is, is create another layer with a color burn and that's going to intensify everything on top of that so I'm going to go ahead and create another layer choose an orange color Come down to my pencil crayon stamp. I'm going to turn that to color burn for now so we can see what's going on. I'm just going to randomly apply 
the stamp just again in in an area um, just to the left of the fox and immediately you'll see that the you know the whole feel of the fox changes and again we're going to clip it choose clipping mask and we can always turn the opacity down if we find it's a bit too intense but for now I'm just going to leave it like that I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer and choosing a yellow color come over to another stamp of mine called the foam roller and again we're just going to randomly stamp out some areas and this time I'm, I'm concentrating on the right hand side of the fox if you can imagine the sun catching him to the right we're going to clip that and I'm just going to see what add does if I bring that down a dash yeah starting to look interesting and then for final sort of highlight detail I'm going to choose the the cream color coming down to one of my other uh, stamp brushes called soft wiggle again concentrating kind of on the right hand side to the fox of the fox and we're going to clip that Oops. and that we're going to leave its natural color so I'm just going to turn the opacity down a dash okay so I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out so what I want to start doing now is start adding just a couple of more interesting uh, details to the fox I'm going to turn this to a multiply this is the the detail of the fox the little eyes and everything so it's a little bit more intense and just above the white create a new layer coming to my brown I'm going to choose one of my pattern brushes uh, yeah let's go with that guy I think that yeah it's going to be too large so I'm just going to change that um, the actual size of the pattern repeat so I'm going to click on that brush again it's going to bring up the brush studio come over to grain turn the opacity oh, sorry turn the scale down a dash probably something like that and see what that looks like yeah that's better and just here and there I'm going to add some of this detail And again, we might play with some of the blending mode options and see how that looks. I think linear burn looks quite interesting, so I'm just going to bring down that opacity a dash. I'm finding the, the kind of shadow side a bit too intense. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take away some of that by using my uh, brush tool and I'm going to choose a brush for that eraser for, sorry I'm using my eraser tool and I'm going to choose um, one of my stamp brushes for the eraser probably the soft wiggle and see what happens bring that size down a dash and then I'm just going to just lightly jab my pencil where I want to take away some of the detail yeah I think that's already looking better Yeah, I think that looks great. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is add some shadow to the entire fox. Um, that's a great way to add more definition to your piece. So I'm going to choose like a bluey color. Coming over to my... Hmm, I see. I'm going to choose Raphael shader and see what happens. I'm going to turn that to multiply. And just very lightly with my pencil applying some shadow you'll see it's already kind of adding that um, definition that we want and I'm going to have to add that uh, shadow underneath his tail 
So I'm going to leave that part for now. And on the same layer, coming back to my grungy pencil, I'm going to start adding some detail where I want more definition. I'm going to swap brushes and use my sketcher. I'm just kind of turning my brush on side so I can get a side angle to the brush. If you can imagine holding a pencil kind of on its side. And I'm doing this just to get some definition in areas that need it. Again, I'm just being loose with my strokes. And I think his little chest needs something. Going back to the bluey color. And you can already see the impact that's having in terms of creating definition. And lastly, we're going to add cute little cheeks for the guy. Well, it's probably a girl. <laughs> so I'm going to come over to my uh, grungy pencil again. Actually, let's choose a different one. Let's go with a big fat pencil. And just made two little circles. Might set that to multiply so we can see it better. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, she's definitely taking shape. So now we're going to move on to the background and add some trees and some flowers and some interest so that she has a scene to be sitting in. Okay, so the first thing I want to do though is just group these all together. And then close that so I don't get too overwhelmed. Um, you'll start noticing now that either, you know, you might be running out of layers. If you are, you can either duplicate the document, flatten that group and carry on. Or what you could do is always just start with a smaller size, um, which obviously isn't very helpful if you're trying to create something that you, you know, you want to print at a larger size. Um, but what you could, as I said, what you could do is duplicate the file as it is right now. And then in the new file, flatten that group and then start building on top of that. So at least that you have the file in layers um, on each stage that you're drawing. Okay, so I want to just go ahead and create a shadow underneath the fox just to give her a dash more definition. I've created a new layer underneath her and I'm going to choose a brush, probably something like the soft shader. See what happens. Yeah, I like that texture for that. And I've set it to multiply. And the reason why I actually like doing multiply for shadows is that what it does is it actually kind of blends in really well with all the other underneath layers, which is what we want. We don't want it sitting on top unnaturally. Okay, so next thing I want to do is create kind of little heels, cute little whimsical heels using that same dark blue. I'm going to use the Vincent Painter and I'm literally just creating a mound. I think that shape is a bit icky. So with my eraser, I've chosen the same brush. I'm just fixing that up a bit. And this one is going to be kind of taller. Yeah, 
you'll see we're starting to get kind of like a painterly effect which is what we're going for and then I'm going to create a new layer but you definitely don't have to you can choose the same layer I'm going to choose a different color and just create just smaller little heels in front of those just out of interest bring my brush size down and the beauty about this is don't try and uh, be perfect I'm gonna move it just slightly over you know we want we want that sort of kind of messy hand-drawn because that's the whole charm and maybe one over here And you can decide how many you want to do, but I think the three works quite well. And then using my sketcher, in fact, I'm going to go back to my grungy pencil to keep the whole sort of look the same. I'm just going to create kind of stick like, if that's the right word, little stick like trees. All these these whimsical uh, details you know they add sort of charm to your drawings and then just a few little sort of grassy speckles in fact I might do I might repeat um, these little speckles on the fox I think that's quite a nice thing to do if you can sort of have elements repeating here and there for uh, you know to create unity in your piece maybe a little hill over here and Coming to my cheek layer of the fox, chosen a light sort of creamy color again, and then oh, that's on multiply, of course. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. We can choose the same layer as our white um, fox area. I'm just going to repeat that sort of flicky. And I'm kind of sticking to the one side but of course you know you can decide whether you want to sort of um, you know take it further and have it in more areas on the fox oops again very light strokes uh, try not to be too heavy-handed Okay, so we're going to create um, a tree now, and um, the, the the best way to do that, well, if you want, if you're kind of saving, you know, trying to save time for yourself, what I do is I create one tree, and then I just duplicate it throughout the piece. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But before I do that, I actually want to add some um, cute sort of interest on top of those mounds by using my pattern brushes. So I'm coming down to one of my botanical ones. On that same uh, layer, I'm not going to create a new one for that um, because I, I kind of know that I'm going to be happy with the results. So I'm just literally applying a pattern sort of pattern brush over the mounds. And then I'm going to choose a pink for the other one. Um, let's see what that pink does. And using a leafy brush. Yeah, I think that's looking good. And then, just as a little bit more interest to the background, I'm going to, again, choose one of my pattern brushes. And this time it's going to be the line, so I'm going to create almost like a heel effect that, that kind of rises up in the background. Oh, I need to choose the right color. So choosing the same color as the cream background. And 
And the nice thing about uh, patterns, you can lift your, your pencil and it'll kind of like remember the repeat, which is pretty handy. <laughs> I think that looks pretty cute. And then with my sketcher brush, I'm just going to add little arrows, which kind of mimic trees. So the sketcher brush is a lot more softer than the grungy pencil. So you can decide if you want to rather um, choose the grungy, grungy pencil for this kind of detail. But I wanted more of a, a soft. Okay, so we're going to move on to the tree. I'm going to turn the fox off because I need to see what I'm doing and the background layer and I'm going to choose the keep it uh, to this cream color and choosing my uh, Vincent painter Oops. I'm going to start with the main trunk which is a dash wider at the bottom and remember we're going for we're going for whimsical so don't beat yourself up if you are not getting a perfect tree but I would say imagine yourself aiming for kind of like a circle shape when you're drawing the branches that would be the easiest way to kind of keep your um, you know your, your lines going somewhere and having purpose That's a weird line. <laughs> and maybe something like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate that tree every time we want to use it. This is kind of like a cheat to uh, save yourself some time. So I'm going to duplicate that, turn that off, come over to my transform tool and just move that into position probably something like that I'm just going to bring the size down a dash that looks pretty good again we're going to duplicate the original and coming over to my transform tool something like that And then we're going to duplicate again but this time what I want to do is I'm going to change the color and we're going to set it to multiply so you don't have to try and match it too much but basically bring your saturation down and I just want to size down a dash because it's kind of quite it's quite overbearing at this point and setting that to multiply bringing down my opacity so it's not so strong I'm going to turn my fox back on so I can kind of gauge where everything's starting to sit and I think I might actually move that over because it looks like it's kind of overpowering everything so something like that and I quite like the shade of that tree so I'm going to duplicate that layer and again we're going to just I'm going to flip that so we have some variation and I just want to give the impression that there's more trees but it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm bringing down the opacity just for a little bit of you know kind of make it more mystical and then as a final touch for the trees on the left and right I'm going to use one of my patterns again to create kind of like a quick sort of uh, leafy area of the tree and I'm going to use the darker blue and using the the dots pattern 
I've created, an, um, I haven't created a new layer. I must create a new layer. Um, the reason why I'm creating a new layer, because in case I don't like what I've done, I can just delete that or change it. Okay, so we are literally just creating kind of like a circle effect around the tree. But what I want to do is I want to miss the branches. So I want to create like a gap. Wherever you see the branches. And I've made my uh, brush smaller, but you'll notice that the pattern size has stayed the same, which is great. That's what we want. So it allows you to work in smaller areas. And again, if you can recall, if you need to change the grain, the size of the pattern, you can always go into the brush itself and change the grain. And then I'm going to do the same for the other tree, but I'm going to choose a different um, pattern. And this time I'm going to go with these little bubbles. And what I might do is kind of like a, a round, loopy sort of shape. But again, I'm missing branches. I don't want to go right over the branches. And this is kind of a, a, cute, a cute sort of fun, quick way Or finishing off your trees. Okay, so I think that's not dark enough. I'm going to change the opacity or at least the blending mode to multiply. And let's see what that looks like. No, I think multiply probably works best. And bring that down a dash. I missed an area. Okay. I think she's starting to take shape. Okay, so we're going to um, draw cute little flowers just in the foreground. And so that layer needs to be right on top of even the fox. So I'm going to go ahead and create a layer above the fox. Coming over to kind of like a reddish brown color. Again, I'm going to use my grungy pencil. And I think what I'm going to do is create the little blobbies first. I'm just varying the color for each one. So there's just a bit of interest. And you'll see pretty rough and ready. There's no precision going on. <laughs> um, maybe something like that. And then using the cream color, coming down to one of my patterns, I'm just going to add some blobby dots. And, oops. I've chosen kind of, as I said, a burnt sort of red color. Again, my grungy pencil. I'm just very roughly creating simple, cute little sort of flower stems. Maybe the odd leaf here and there. And again, I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I'm all for saving time. Just want to bring that up a dash. Okay, so that's our original one. We may want to actually just say that. Original. And I'm going to duplicate. Bring it down a dash. And just flip that so it looks a little different. Duplicate the original, bring it over, whoops, bring it over to the other side. And 
and I suppose it doesn't help that now they're all called original, but you get the idea. I should have named it after I duplicated it. Um, and that's our last little one we want to do over about there. And just flatten all of these. So I'm just pinching all of them together just so we save a few layers. And then as a final detail in the background, so just above that light um, cream color, I'm creating a new layer. I'm choosing the darker sort of bluey color. And I'm going to use my pattern, uh, the dashes pattern. But what I want to do is increase the scale. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just literally very randomly adding this pattern. And then what I want to do is just delete areas, some areas here and there. And I'm going to use one of my brushes to do that. Uh, let's try the Raphael shader. And the reason why I'm, I'm doing that, because I just want, I want to be able to control what I delete. And not just sort of randomly and like delete everything. I want it to kind of blend in with the background. And again, I'm going to choose multiply and then just change the opacity a dash. So that helps it blend in better with everything. And then finally, as a finishing touch, we're going to add some clouds and choose my big fat pencil. I'm literally making kind of like swirlies and then just extending the end and then possibly choose a different blending mode. Actually that looks quite nice, lighter color. And there you have it. We've just created a cute little fox in a woodland theme. Um, I hope you found some good tips along the way on how to add texture to your work and all those um, kind of lovely whimsical details that will make all the difference to your artwork. Thanks for watching.